Mm, vlog day 570. Let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. Good morning. It's Tuesday, which means for you it's Wednesday, which means today is a writerly Wednesday. And today we're going to be talking about the agent hunt. And no, I don't mean the agent Ethan hunt. We talked about Mission Impossible yesterday. We don't, it's not everything ties into Tom Cruise around here. What do I mean by the agent hunt? Agnar's box. I'm looking to sell my book, Agnar's box, which means I probably need an agent. Do I guarantee they need an agent? No. Should I get one? Yes. And Agnes Box is kind of like the honey pot I'm hoping to use to sucker an agent into my lair. I don't know, we're mixing our metaphors now, which isn't going to help me get an agent. Don't mix your metaphors, kids. It's not good for your literary careers. So we're going to talk today about how I have chosen the agents I'm going to query. I uh, realized that I was saying query the other day too much to Rob's dismay. I don't know why my accent changes on random words from time to time. I blame the fact that I live abroad. But we're going to be talking about how I figured out which agents I should query how I figured out how I should query them, how you query them once you figure out how to query them. And then, you know, we're gonna wait four to six weeks to hear from them, hopefully hear from them. Otherwise, it's a, like a tacit rejection if you hear nothing back after like two months. Two months of waiting, really? Okay, and also what's gonna decide where we go today is how the way in goes back here. I was not as disciplined the last couple of days as I should have been. I'm afraid I'm about to pay the price for that. So depending on how I weigh in, that will determine whether where I go. Because if I weigh in well, like if I lose a good enough two pounds, or at least a pound, I'm not gonna feel super great about it unless I lost like two pounds. Basically, if we're under 200 pounds, I'm gonna go to KB and I'm gonna get myself a cookie as a reward. If I don't, I'm gonna go to the Peloton and not have a cookie as my punishment. Mwah, mwah. Okay, but Agent Hunt, let's roll. So That's really close. Uh, uh, we'll decide after I've dressed and had a banana. Let it snow. Let it snow. First thing you gotta do, I don't know, this may seem obvious, but you need to know like which genre your book fits into because certain agents only represent certain things. Are you fiction or non-fiction? Are you genre or not? Do you write romance? Do you write fantasy? Do you write mysteries, thrillers? You gotta know that first because if you <laughs> if you're gonna study a book, period, you should know that. But if you're gonna find an agent, they only represent certain things. Some of them represent oh, everything, but not all of them. And if you start sending queries to agents for books they don't represent, you're not gonna make friends. I just finished sending queries to 11 agents in total, I think. I almost had 12. Natasha threw an extra one in the mix for me to send one to, and which made up for one that is closed to submissions as of yesterday. And that's kind of a note. You want to read submission guidelines, but we're getting ahead of ourselves. Because I talked about genre earlier, but the reality is, first thing that you can do for yourself in selling your book, period, but especially to somebody like an agent or a publisher, is actually know what your book is about. Like, genre is part of that. But what are the core struggles? What is your main character gonna have to overcome? What are their internal struggles, their external struggles? What are their wants versus their needs? That kind of stuff. Because those are the things that have to fit in your query. Maybe a hook or two in there, you definitely gotta hook them, but they're gonna wanna know that you actually have a story and that it actually goes somewhere, that it actually develops. So that's the first thing you need to do. That's what I've been working on forever, it's just trying to figure out how do you actually know your own stories? And that's kind of just the development of becoming a writer, right? But assuming you have that down, what do you do next? Once you know what your book is about, then you can actually start finding agents, right? Because they, like we said earlier, represent certain types of fiction, nonfiction, whatever it is that you're writing. 
So the way that I went about it was, uh, for one, I know a lot of authors. So I, I looked at their agents first to start. Actually, one of their, I could probably send a query. Speaking of, there's one more agent I could probably send a query to. That part of it is getting to know agents, like at conventions, wherever you can, just to talk to them on Twitter, wherever is appropriate. Remember, they're real people and they get inundated with most ridiculous emails and tweets ever. And so you don't want to stand out as anything but professional and interested and as appropriate as possible. And if you're not sure what's appropriate or not, there's a lot of literature written about how to talk to agents on the internet. Go look that up. It, it will help. Similarly, writing a query letter, synopsis, all that stuff. I'll put some helpful links down below. There are a lot of really good resources out there for how to approach an agent. But in finding an agent, I started by looking at my friend's agents and then the agents of books that were similar to my book. That's one of the hardest things as well, figuring out what books are similar to your books. And then just, you know, kind of bouncing around between, through my research, finding agents that I thought seemed cool, seemed approachable, seemed like people that I might like to work with. And so for the last couple of years, I just kind of followed some of them on Twitter, made like little spreadsheets here and there, just kind of kept track of the ones that I thought might be good fits for me. And that's part of the problem is you don't actually know if they're gonna be a good fit for you or not until you, you know, get to know them. All you know from the outside is the books that they represent, how successful they are more or less, however it is that they end up presenting themselves on Twitter or wherever else, their blogs, that kind of stuff. So I made a spreadsheet. I figured 10, well now it's gonna be like a dozen, but I figured about 10 agents would be a good first round of querying. You write your query letter, you make it as concise as possible, you get that, those like wants and needs, you try to get just, I have a story to tell in there, right? Same with the synopsis. Don't worry about spoilers, don't worry about anything, just tell them, look, I, I know what my story is, I know where the main plot points are, I know how this develops. You really wanna communicate that like you actually know what the heck you're doing on the story side of things because just because you can write flowery words doesn't mean that you can tell a good story. So you want to make sure that you communicate as much of that as possible, and I hope that I've done a good job of that. Thank you, Natasha and Richard, for looking over all of that for me to, you know, hopefully help it be as on point as possible. So then what I did is I, I literally made a spreadsheet. Here are the agents I want to query. Here are their submission guidelines. Here's their email, whatever. Because it's really important that you know each of them want different things. Some of them just want an email query. Some of them want a query with like a chunk of your manuscript pasted into the email itself. Some of them accept attachments. Some of them don't. Some of them want synopses. Some of them don't. It's all kind of all over the place. And you really want to respect what it is they're asking for just because, I mean, it's common courtesy, it's professional, and it helps to indicate that you're actually paying attention and putting effort into it. So I have a spreadsheet that has all of their submission guidelines in it. I open that up, review it, right? Create the email, paste the body of the query in, personalize it a little bit, and then add whatever materials it is that they've asked for in the method that they've asked for it, then double check it, and then send it. I've been here for what, like four hours, something like that? Three, three, four hours doing this just to send 11 of these query letters. But I think it's really, really important to take your time. I've already done all the research. I have an idea of who they are. I have an idea of what they're looking for. Some of them are a little bit closer than others. Some of them really are know are gonna love what I'm sending them, and some of them I'm really actually not sure. And maybe I won't hear back from any of them. They all say like four to six weeks. One of them said eight weeks. Like their turnaround time is eight weeks. And one of them already emailed me back to say he's gonna read my uh, query letter as soon as he has time, which is nice of him. And I got some automated responses as well. And now is the waiting portion. I'm actually way less stressed out about this, like doing all the prep work, having Natasha beat me about the head, how oh, this isn't that bad of a process. All that kind of stuff has really kind of helped me to be mostly excited for it. And it knocks off another step on the goal to selling Agnar's box, which is query agents. We haven't found one yet. That's really the actual step. That's the, we'll get there. So if I get boil this down to a few helpful hints is be professional, actually pay attention to what's going on, do your research, get to know the agent as best you can in advance, get to know what it is that they love, write a really stinking good query letter and then rewrite it and then rewrite it again and really that goes back to actually understanding your own story and if you think your story is special, there's no other books like it in the world, there's no other story that's ever been written like it, you're just not doing your due diligence. And one of those things that's really important is to get your comp titles right. I kind of took a risk, I don't know if it's a big risk, but I did film comparisons at the very beginning of the query and then author comparisons after that saying which people like fans of what films and fans of what authors I thought would be appropriate hopefully they don't mind that I use films usually that works really well but I Natasha caught me because I was using films on both so I, I used books for the second one where well, I'm trying to sell a book it makes sense but doing all this as best you can as concisely as you can as professionally as you can I imagine will get you a lot farther than just slopping something together, not actually putting the agent's name in the text itself, and then disregarding the uh, submission guidelines because that's a quick way to not make friends. Don't do that. You're in the business of making friends. It's a long-term relationship you're trying to create here. At least that's what I'm trying to do. So do it right the first time, or just don't do it at all.
All right, man. Okay. Catch you later. All right, 11 or 12, I don't even know how many now. 11 or 12 agents queried, one publisher submitted to, and now we wait. Whew, it's cold. I'm gonna go for a little bit of a walk on the islands, take advantage of this snowy situation, because the snow is actually sticking, as you might notice from things like this parking machine right here. It's not the happiest of parking machines. I, my, I, my feet are freezing. I've gotta be very careful not to slip and die. Cause I'm wearing my Vans when I should be wearing my boots. And I think I'm just gonna <laughs> wear boots only for the foreseeable future. Beautiful though. So, with the querying side of things, that's kind of where I think the most important thing for me was knowing my book. Like really knowing my book, knowing the ins and outs of it, beat by beat, and not getting roped into like the flowery extra stuff too much detail, but really knowing like what's happening in each scene, in each chapter, what's being accomplished, how are we advancing the story, how are people changing, how are decisions being made, and how are those decisions affecting things. And that's how you end up writing a good synopsis and ultimately a good query, I think, as well. I mean, we'll find out how good my query is here shortly. We're in like two months. <laughs> I don't know what else, I don't know if there's anything I'm missing. I think I pretty much hit it all. Ultimately, an agent is one of those things that I think is a really good investment in a long-term publishing career because they're gonna be out there working for you. You know, helping you sell books to more publishers. Just like a publisher is out there helping you sell more books to more potential readers. They're partnerships, which is why I think it's really important to go into it with your eyes open, think of it as a business transaction, and at least for me, not think of it in terms of like personal validation or a sense of, I don't know, self-importance, which I think, I don't think it's an invalid reason to publish. There are a lot of people who look to feel that validation of being published, and I'm sure I'll feel that and enjoy it too, but at the same time, for me, there's a real importance to trying to build a good long-term publishing career, and I think that there are some really interesting and amazing tools available to writers today that haven't been available before. Patreon's a great example, crowdfunding of various sorts, self-publishing with Amazon and so forth. And it's all still kind of up in the air. None of it's perfect. I'm getting a lot of snow in my face and beard. Sorry about that. Although I feel like the snow owes me the apology. But we're figuring it out. And so we'll see. I have some strategies, some plans, some of which I've shared on here, some of which I will share later after they work or fail. And I'm just trying to figure it out as well. So there's no one size fits all strategy or career within anything creative. So just kind of got to go for it as best you can. And that's the plan. All right, my hands are frozen. I got to find somewhere warm soon. And I also don't know that I'm going for a run today in the midst of all this nasty. Let it snow. cold enough filming outside that I can't feel my fingers. First round of postcards going in the mail. I'll try to fill out some more tonight and we'll just keep, keep it rolling as we go. Blah. Holy snow, Mageddon, Batman. This isn't that much snow, I realize. I've already been tweeted out over that, but. Ugh, I was hoping for spring. What is this nonsense? February is supposed to be spring, dang it. I know, I wish that was true. Anyways, uh, I hope that today was helpful. If nothing else, to give you an idea of what my strategies are and what I'm doing to get closer to that goal of selling Agnar's box, which is on the wall back in my apartment. And hopefully, if you're looking to query an agent yourself, you found it somewhat helpful, 
in processing how to go about it. If you have specific questions, feel free to ask below. Maybe I can make another video that covers those if there's a consensus that I didn't cover something well enough. And again, a disclaimer that I probably should have put up in the beginning before a snowflake blinded my left eye. I'm not an expert. I've just done a lot of research and I have a lot of friends who've gone through this process. And I've tried a lot of conversations and developed my own strategy. And so that was what we talked about today. So hopefully it was helpful. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do subscribe. Like the video, leave a comment. I'd love it. Just to know what you're thinking about as far as this whole Agnar's box thing goes. And with the Courier's discussion from yesterday, I do think we're gonna drop audio for now so we can figure out a better solution for the future. So I'll keep you guys up to date on the progress of that Kickstarter as we come up. Thank you so much for your support and for jumping in and giving me your advice, your, your thoughts, your suggestions, and also just, you know, committing to help. I really, really appreciate it. So it means a lot. Anyways, I'm about to freeze. So uh, I'll leave you here and we'll probably have more snowy footage from Paris tomorrow. So if you like seeing Paris in the snow, definitely subscribe. Come back tomorrow. I'll see you later. I've got to go inside. Let it snow.